So this is going to be difficult, but I'm going to ask you to do this. Imagine that you're home. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You feel safe. You're with your family. But next thing you know, the front door of your house comes crashing in. Men with guns come in. They take the men in your family and kill them in front of you. Throw them into mass graves. The young women and children are sold off into a sex trade. The older women are sold off into servitude. And as far as you know, this is going to be your existence, if you can make it through this. Well, unfortunately, this is a reality for many, many people around the world. And in particular, the minority Christians and Yadizis in Iraq. Now, there is a light at the end of this tunnel, thanks in part to the Trump administration and what they're doing. I'm going to talk about that. But moreover, I'm going to talk about the five takeaways or lessons that we all can learn to prevent things like this from happening in the future. And we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Kyle, and welcome to my channel where we take culture TV and movies and we filter it right. If this is your first time here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so that you don't miss any future content. And like I said in my intro, this is not going to be an easy subject, but there is hope. And that's what this message is about. So we're talking about Iraq. We're talking about a group of people that ravaged that particular country. This group I'm talking about is, of course, ISIS or the Islamic State. If you're not familiar with who these people are, I'm going to leave a quick link below so you can get up to speed. But in short, they are a group who took the Islamic faith and used it in a way that would create what they would call a caliphate in the area of Iraq and Syria. And they were very ruthless. They went through that area. This caliphate came up in part because of the destruction of the Iraqi government and because of what happened with Syria as well, their civil war left a vacuum there in leadership. And so this group, ISIS, became very powerful. And in 2014, just became a devastating force around that region in the Middle East. And what they did was they went through areas that they didn't agree with and took them out. The women were sold off into sex trades. The men were killed. And I'm going to leave a link there below of a 60-minute piece to give you a little bit of perspective on what that was like from the people who were actually there. And so what I'm going to share with you is an article that came out this week. The Trump administration had a, a gathering at the State Department. I'm going to read this article for you here. It's with the Breitbart, and I'm going to leave a link to that below as well. It says here, the U.S. President Donald Trump administration is helping bring Christians and Yadizis in Iraq back from the brink of extinction, fomented by a genocidal campaign at the hands of the Islamic State. Religious minority representatives declared this week at the second ministerial to advance religious freedom convened by the Department of State. The government has officially determined that ISIS committed genocide against Christians, Yadizis, and other religious minorities during its reign of terror in the Middle East that began in 2014, prompting the Trump administration to launch a multi-million dollar program to help the victims. Several religious leaders and organizations warned that the two groups were facing extinction in the wake of the ISIS genocide. So this group of people, the Adizis and the Christian minorities and other religious groups, these people who were not in line with what ISIS was trying to accomplish or believed. These people were slaughtered and taken out. And at the outset of that, the people there were terrified. They ran off. And when you watch the video, you'll see that they thought that they were going to be safe. The people around them, their leaders said, look, these people are coming. ISIS, that is. You're going to be fine. Many people took off and left. 
those are the people that survived. Those that did not, who trusted their government and the people around them, didn't do so well. The men, like I said, were slaughtered in mass graves. And so the first point I want to make here, and I want to point out the fact that the Trump administration is doing a, a lot in this regard. It says here in this article, the Trump administration has devoted $340 million to support religious minorities in Iraq alone. Uh, Michael Harvey, the assistant administrator for U.S. Aid Middle East Bureau, said on Wednesday. So I'm going to talk to you now about my five takeaways, one by one. The first one, and it should come as no surprise, but the first point is this. Is that Trump, President Trump, is not a monster. I know it's shocking to many of you who listen to the mainstream media, but it's true. I'm going to read you some quotes here by the people here as part of this convention that happened in the State Department. So, while delivering a speech during the event on Wednesday, Father Tahib Habib Yosef of the Chaldean Catholic priest from the town of Kalmes in Iraq, Nineveh province, thanked the Trump administration for its assistance. The priest known as Father Tabed said, I wish to give thanks to the government of the United States for including us in this important conference and a special thanks to the administration of President Trump for his concern and commitment to the persecuted minority communities in Iraq. I say this conference gives us hope. Our greatest fear in the early years was that the world would forget us. This conference tells us we are not forgotten. So the first point is simply this, is that whether you like President Trump or not, and this is my second point, is that evil does exist. It does. And a lot of people want to just look at things and say, you know what, this is a partisan thing. Well, evil is not partisan. People need to take the stance that, look, if something is wrong, stand up for it and fight for it. Support it, do what you can, but don't allow it. And that's point number two, is that evil does exist. And so with that, it should be a no-brainer. The third point I like to make on this is that evil, opposing evil, is nonpartisan. If you are a Democrat... If you are a Republican, it makes no difference. Evil is evil. Stand up against it. My fourth point is this. When evil does rear its ugly head, after we've done everything we're supposed to do, we've sent the money we need to do, we've sent the support we're supposed to do, we pray everything we can, unfortunately, evil does come out despite all of our actions. However, my fourth point is this, is that America is the beacon of hope around the world that comes out and combats that. America has been there from the very beginning, even going back with Jefferson and the Barbary Pirates to Nazi Germany, to preventing the spread of communism in North Korea and Vietnam around the world. Anytime there's a disaster, that there's a famine or there's destruction or chaos, America is always at the forefront of coming in and taking the lead on those tragic events so that we can extend our values to the world. And it's about hope. It's about hope. And America is that beacon. And we can't forget that going forward, regardless of what you feel about who's president or what campaigns are going on at the moment. We have to look at evil for what it is. Recognize it's not political. Recognize that when it does show up, that America is that country that helps to prevent that. Can you imagine America not being here around the world? What would the world be like without her? So I'm going to read another point here. The security situation has changed for the better in Sajir area. That's in Iraq. ISIS has been defeated, thankfully, because that's what America does. Half Yadizi lands used to be under ISIS control before the Trump administration took over. And what has happened recently is every single Yadizi village has been liberated from ISIS. Although the U.S. has completely annihilated ISIS territorial caliphate in March of this year, 2019, the jihadi group remains in insurgency menace, the Pentagon's inspector general has warned. So, Evil's still there. The caliphate has been destroyed from a military standpoint, 
They don't control any lands or occupy any areas, but their mentality is still there. They're still a threat to rise up again, which is why we must be diligent on this and continue to push forth the efforts to help the Yadizis, the Christians, the minority religious groups that are there that have been persecuted by ISIS and the Caliphate. I'm going to read another quote here. The U.S. has always been a symbol of freedom for persecuted people around the world. If minorities like Yadizis and Christians would have vanished from the Middle East, it would show the world the United States is not vested in promoting its values and a lot of people would lose hope. But now the administration has intervened and hope is back. These are quotes by people who were actually at this convention on Tuesday. And I'm sure the media didn't give it as much credit as they should have. That's fine. That's why this video is being made. But again, this video is about hope. And I hope that this is making some sense here. But we're not done yet. My last point is this. Help does not mean dependency. And to make sure that you don't get it from me and think that I'm just trying to be political on this, I'm going to let you hear from the people who are actually at this convention what they said about this. So Father Thabit warned again. He said this. He said, the problem of the culture of dependency. He went on to say, there is a time and place for humanitarian aid and assistance. As displaced minorities of Iraq have needed in these past years. However, as Christians, we believe that every person is called to a life of dignity, including the dignity of work and responsibility for themselves as human beings. Much of the Middle East has already been made to be a place of permanent beggars. Permanent beggars. We all know the result, and it's not good. I'm going to let that statement stay right there. That can be a whole video in of itself. So to go over the five takeaways again, to recap, number one, Trump is not a monster. Number two, evil does exist. Number three, opposing evil is nonpartisan. Number four, evil comes up, but when it does, America is the beacon of hope around the world. And lastly, when America does provide help, the people can't be dependent on that help. They need to be self-determined. Those are my five takeaways. I hope this article was enlightening. I hope this video was enlightening. And I'd like to know what your thoughts. What do you think about the Yadizis, Iraq, Syria, the Caliphate, the minority Christians around the world? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. And if you know of anyone who is suffering in this regard, put that in the comments below so we can reach out to them and pray for them. please hit that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. And as always, please check out some videos that we have right here.